Okay, let's get into branch instructions. So branch instructions are used to create parallel passive input condition instructions. A rung will be true if either instruction A or B is true. So thus we're seeing these things that two pass to, to go forward. Parallel branches can be used to allow more than one combination of input conditions. Either A and not B or C provides logical continuity and energizes output D. Output branching allows a true logic path to control multiple outputs. Either A or B provides a true logic path to all three output instructions, C, D, and E. Additional input instructions can be programmed in the output branches. Input and output branches can be nested to avoid redundant instructions and to speed up processor scan time. A nested branch starts or ends within another branch. For nested branches, in some PLC models, the programming of a nested branch cannot be done directly. It is possible, however, to program a logically equivalent branching condition. So keep that in mind. The PLC will not allow for programming of vertical contacts. Boolean equations, um, as were shown here, um, reprogram, you can reprogram it to eliminate the, the vertical contact. And so that's, um, you have to do a little bit of manipulation to make things that are viable for the way that we are able to program things. Right to left logic, the, the processor examines the latter logic rung for, for logic continuity from left to right. Programming, the program has shown contact combination FDBC would be ignored. And so we have the Boolean equation here. It's, um, we would go ahead and reprogram the circuit as we're, we're seeing here. Internal relay instructions. Um, internal relays are used for a program that requires more series contents than the rungs would allow. So for this case, the PL allows for only seven series contexts when 12 are actually required for the programming logic. Um, for programming, um, examine if closed and examine if open instructions. So um, I'll just use these terms, XIC instructions, both the, the, the NO and the NC push buttons are represented in the program by the examine if closed instruction, XIC. The normal state of the field input device, NO or NC, does not matter to the controller. What matters is that the contacts um, need to be closed to energize the output. For the XIO instruction, the, the push button is represented in the user program by the examine if open XIO instruction. This is because the rung must be true when the external push button is open and false when the push button is closed. So here is the OTE truth table. The, the logic state 0, 1 indicates whether an instruction is true or false and is the basis of controller operations. And so here we see XIC, XIO, and OTE um, for, for these different type of scenarios in, in this um, truth table. Um, let's look a little bit further. The OTE time truth table, the timed aspect relates to the repeated scan of the program, whereas the input table is updated with the most current status bit. So you can keep this in mind as well. Well, okay, let's. Think about the entering the ladder diagram. So once again, in the textbook, they talk about specific hardware. So the Rockwell RX logic software packages uh, are window programming packages used to develop ladder logic programs. Software in various versions can be used to program the SLC 500, control logic, compact logic, and micro logic family of processors. A personal computer is most often used and is adapted to a particular PLC model through the use of the relevant programming controller software. Here's an example of what it would look like. The uh, RS Logic 5000 main window, um, if you're doing it in Windows. The instruction toolbar with a bits instruction is selected to place an instruction on a rung. Click its icon in the toolbar and simply drag the instruction straight off of the toolbar onto the rung of the ladder. So that's the thing that we can be using as we're starting to develop those ladders. You can select the processor type. The, the programming software needs to know what processor is being used in conjunction with the user program. 
So the select processor types tree contains a list of the different processors that the RX logic, R, RS logic software can program. The IO configuration screen lets you double click or drag and drop a module from your all-inclusive list to assign it to a slot in your configuration. The data file screens contain the data that are used in conjunction with the latter program instructions and include input and output files, as well as timer, counter, integer, and bit files. The Relay Ladder Logic is a graphical programming language designed to closely represent the appearance of a wired relay system. The logic is apparent from the highlighting, which identifies the logic state of the contact in real time and which rungs have logic continuity. All right, let's talk about modes of operation. Uh, processor is basically two modes of operation, the program mode, and in some variation of the run mode. A three position key switch may be used to select different processor modes of operation. So you can keep that in mind. So there's a program mode, run mode, test mode, and re remote position. These are the kind of things that we can have. So the, the one that may not be familiar is where you can have remote control can be con controlled by another PLC is what we're trying to, to show in that final one. Okay, let's talk about connecting with analog devices. So um, first let's think about analog versus digital. Maybe this will help give you a perspective of what those means. Digital devices operated on discrete on or off signals that have only two possible values, either on or off, one or zero. That's what we're seeing here. Analog signals can take any shape and represent an infinite number of possible values. So each of these are on these, uh, every value on this curve is something that would be valid and needs to be figured out. So we have these converters. Then analog signals must be coded into digital before they can be processed. And so an analog to digital converter or ADC converts the analog input to digital signals. And so that's what we need. And so a digital to analog converter, a DAC, converts the in the opposite direction, the digital output signals back to analog signals. And then finally, we show an example here, an analog controller for a tank fill process. And so basically, as it fills up, there's a sensor, and it will slow things down as the, the valve will slowly close. And so that would be an example of how that could work. All right. Well, that's the end for this chapter. Thank you very much.